Hey, it's Joel, and behind me, next to me, to my side, is this nondescript old gray building. It's a ghost of yesteryear, and yet inside this building houses a 3D printing technology that we've yet to show you, and it's gonna change the world, and it just might save your life. And I get to show it to you right here on 3D Printing Nerd. I know on the show, you're used to seeing all sorts of really cool plastic things, things printed in PLA, ABS, HIPS, Peak, and Ultim, ASA, all sorts of really cool materials making all sorts of really cool things, and it follows 3D printing. So we've got an X and a Y and a Z, and that object just appears over time. But thanks to that same 3D printing technology, Lulzbot and Fluidform are giving us something that's going to completely change the world. And I get to show it to you right now. This is the Lulzbot Bio. It may look familiar to Mini owners because, well, that frame is, is a familiar frame, but unlike your Mini, this can print collagen and stem cells and all sorts of biomaterial. It's changed a bit because you have, well, first a blue power button. It's a nice blue. It has this touchscreen up front, which then moves this print head around. This is not extruding plastic. This is a syringe extruding biomaterial. And rather than printing on a print bed itself, the bed is there minus the PEI, and instead there is a support gel that holds the material that you're printing. And what's fantastic, it's Lulzbot. So this entire platform is open source. And what's great about that is you don't know what you're printing down the line, and so open source allows you to change what you need. You know, uh, I have an idea about this, but I know someone that knows a lot more, and I'd like to bring them in. It's Eric from Lulzbot. How's it going, Joel? Hey, Eric. Nice lab coat. Thanks, you look very professional. Thanks, you as well. <laughs> so this Lulzbot Bio now, this is the new offering from Lulzbot, and it's wonderful for many reasons, mainly because it's allowing 3D printing of materials that might not have been able to be printed before, right? Yes, so this is the Lulzbot Bio. It is a fresh certified 3D printer um, for printing unmodified collagen, bio inks, and other soft materials like thermosets. What does fresh stand for? Uh, freeform reversible embedding of suspended hydrogels. That's a lot um, of words. <laughs> basically, it is suspending a bio-type material or soft material into a gel. Um, when you're done printing, you actually uh, heat that gel up and it will turn back into a liquid and release your print. So by gel, we're not talking about jello. This isn't cherry flavored, right? No. This is actually uh, life support from the company Fluidform. Uh, it was based on research coming out of Carnegie Mellon University. That's fantastic. And so that, that life support, that fresh certified process, allows the printing of different types of soft materials from this syringe? Yes, this is a, a syringe pump extruder. Um, and basically it can print anything that is a soft kind of fluid material. Meaning cells, meaning, I don't know, <laughs> frosting? What, what all is meant to be put through that, do you think? So we have done collagen. Um, alginate is a, a brown seaweed derived material for prototyping. Um, but really the sky's the limit in terms of, uh, you can do photo curable resins, epoxies, silicones. Um, those will not be preset profiles out of the box, um, but we will eventually get there. Profiles out of the box. So this platform, this Lulzbot Bio is actually using Lulzbot Cura? Yes, uh, we use Cura Lulzbot Edition. Um, and as always, it's free software and open source hardware. That's so cool. So this life support material in this container, what, what actually is that? So life support is a microparticle gelatin. Um, in traditional 3D printing, you have a support structure that holds your print as you're printing, um, while this holds your print as you're printing soft materials. Materials that would not be able to support their own weight in open air. Um, so you print into the gel, and then you can cure it through photo curing, uh, chemical curing, or uh, even just heat curing and then you heat up the build plate and it will release the print. It turns back into a fluid and you have your, your soft print uh, at the end of the process. So then when you have this material here and it, you, I think you said that you heat it up and it releases, meaning that it's, it's a liquid and you can take the part out, then do you cure the part within 
the solution or do you take it out and cure it? Uh, you will cure it within the solution. And so sometimes you can mis mix the material with a pH uh, solution to change, change the pH and things like collagen will uh, cross-link uh, through that process. <laughs> okay, what is it, man? Now you're gonna have to help me out here because there's some pretty big words here. I wanna make sure I understand and my audience understands as well. What do you mean by cross-linking a collagen? So when you do traditional 3D printing, there's something called inner layer adhesion. You're probably familiar with that. Plastic melting on top of other plastic. It holds yes. together pretty well. So basically in bioprinting, that is the same thing. Um, some materials are not native in terms of cross-linking. So you have to do photo cross-linking. You can do heat changes, um, pH changes. You can alginate, you add calcium to it and it allows it to um, cross-link. So the material that comes out of here is supported within that life support gel. Yes. And it may need to be cross-linked, meaning that it needs the layers to adhere to each other. Yes. And you can do that post-printing. Yes. Okay, wow. So like in traditional printing, it melts together all in one go. This one, there's a couple different processes there. Yeah, yeah. In printing though, with this, so once you have this done and you take it out, can we actually take something out and see it happen? Yeah, you wanna give it a, give I it a go? I do, I really, really do. I've got the lab coat, I should. All right, let's do it. So this right here, this is what was just on the printer. Yes, we've uh, heated up the life support gel to about room temperature, so it's turned back into a liquid, and now it's time to get our print out of the gel. This is so exciting. What's the next step for doing that? What are you gonna, what are you gonna do? Okay, we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it into a calcium chloride solution, and that's gonna help with cross-linking and preservation of our print. Okay. So you've got the tweezers, and you're grabbing the container, and you're bringing it over to the calcium chloride, and you're you're slowly dipping it, and I don't, where's it? I don't see it. Is it transparent? Yes, we did not add any blue dye to it. The alginate is uh, translucent. Oh, I see it, I see it now. Look at that, okay. And it's in the dish. This is so cool. What is it? So this is a, a perfusion test. Um, basically, it's going to emulate a vascular network. Vascular being heart stuff. Yes, yes, okay. uh, think blood vessels. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take some uh, fake blood and we're gonna pump <laughs> it through blood. that. It's food coloring, right? Yes, yes. Good. Uh, and then I'm gonna let you pump some of our fake blood through it. Okay, really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that right in there, right in there. That's cool. That's re oh, that's really cool. And that was 3D printed. Like a, a machine printed this, and I am pumping fake blood through it. This is incredible, Eric. The fact that this was 3D printed using technology that I've made Pikachus with actually printed something that could be used for heart stuff. Yes, like, yes. The, uh, the goal way down the road is that we will actually be able to print organs. Organs themselves. Yes. So yes. the size of the print is only limited right now by the container of that gel? Yes. Oh. So where you will start to see this first is it's gonna be in pharmaceutical testing. Basically, they want to emulate in-body uh, conditions external to the body, and their main goal is to reduce failure, late-stage failure of drug testing because it can take billions of dollars to bring a drug to market. Oh, and so using this technology, then there's, it's gonna be safer for humans? Yes. Because the, the drug companies will be able to test on non-human, but like in body conditions. Yes. That is That's... so cool. Uh, so this is also going to reduce the problem of testing on animals. Um, you can create, recreate skin type conditions and use it for cosmetic testing. Oh, so something that this machine prints, then cosmetic companies can test on rather than making uh, lab mice pretty. They can make little, little bits here pretty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is cool. Do you have other stuff you can show me that you printed with the bio? Yes, I have a couple things right here. Um, so right here, we have an artery tree printed out, uh, out of alginate. Um, basically, this is your low cost prototyping material. Um, living cells are extremely expensive. Collagen can be expensive. Um, oh, so similar to my style of 3D printing with, with standard plastics, you use the really cheap stuff on a new design to see if you like it and prototype and then 
And then once you have something you like, you use the more expensive or the higher yes. quality stuff. So with this, you can prototype with a cheap material and then human cells, once you're confident in the design. Yes, yes, uh, so stem amazing. cells can be very expensive. I would imagine so. So here we actually have a collagen ear. Here, trade me. A collagen ear, it look, oh, it's almost, it's almost like a ghostly shape in there. So it's not dyed any color. The collagen no, no. itself is just natural color? Yes, so we will actually add dye to it because a lot of these materials are inherently translucent. Um, so this one is a little bit closer to what it's naturally gonna look like. And this is what material again? Collagen. This is collagen. Unmodified collagen. Um, and a lot of the previous kind of bioprinting technology, they have to chemically alter collagen to make it more printable. Um, one of the great things about the fresh printing process in the Lulzbot Bio is you do not have to chemically alter this uh, collagen to make it printable. That's, it's, that sounds cool. So unmodified collagen, easier to acquire or less expensive or, uh, or I think what it makes just, it so good? It's actually getting us closer to um, recreating the, phys the physiology or the, the actual conditions within the human body. Cool. And then we have one other print right here. Um, so this one is actually a collagen heart valve. This has not oh. been tested on animals yet, <laughs> um, but they have actually hooked it up to a machine and uh, simulated blood flow through this. Okay, and then we have a couple more prints. Uh, how would you like to hold a heart that we hold have? Hold a heart? Yes. An actual heart? Yes. Yes, I would like to hold a heart. <laughs> So what is, this is a heart, an honest to goodness heart. Yes, this is a 3D printed alginate heart. It's been 3D, a heart. This is an organ, this exists in a body and it's been 3D printed. Yes, would you like to <laughs> hold it? Yes, yes, I'm gonna hold it. Now it's probably gonna flatten out. Um, that's kind of the whole concept behind the support material. Yeah, I, this is so cool. So with this, something, so something like this, it's flattening out though, because if it was a standard, regular, honest to goodness organ, it would as well, right? Because it's yes. a soft material. Yes. So that life support, that gel that it prints in, that, that's essential for this process. Yes. Wow. <laughs> How's it smell? It smells like a doctor's office. You could see the detail, like the, the small detail of this. Yes, so we're actually able to go down to five micron layers and we're, at, we're able to go down <laughs> to uh, 20 micron needles. Um, although when you do living cells, you can only do about a hundred micron needle because then you start to impact um, the cell viability or you, you start to kill the cells. Really? So too small of a needle and the cells die? Yes. Th this is a heart, meaning if it was, okay, this is the prototyping material, yes. then you could use living cells and make a heart that is compatible with like a living organism. Yes, that is the end goal. Um, you would use collagen and a couple other things that comprise of the, or make up the extracellular matrix. Um, basically, cells by themselves do not make up tissues. There's a whole lot of extra material that help those cells form a structure and talk together and work together to do their function. And that's collagen, that's fibrin, that's uh, hyaluronic acid. That's a, a whole lot things. of stuff. Yes. Eric, I gotta ask you, something like this, uh, it's open source, which is great, but I mean, first to the market, the amazing abilities of it, what does something like this cost? This is actually gonna be $7,500. 7,500 uh, US dollars. Yes. That and seems like so little. Yes, uh, it's great. The implications of this technology are profound. Um, so we want to get it out there for people to start prototyping, start um, innovating the bioprinting space. So we are actually going to put this back in here. Okay. And then I have one more thing for you. Okay. Here we have a 3D bioprinted Joel Telling. Look at that. I can see my head and my <laughs> legs and my arm is up in a high five. <laughs> can I eat it? Uh, you could try. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Look at that. It's so tiny. And this is, it's blue, so it's in the collagen, right? Alginate. Alginate, sorry, yes. alginate. Collagen is the good stuff. Uh, collagen is a little bit more expensive, but um, not too okay. not expensive. So the Joel bot, or not the Joel bot, the little mini Joel here, he's not that expensive. No, no, okay. no, and you can take that with you. Oh, what am I, are they gonna let this on the plane? 
And TSA, TSA is going to hold me back because they're not going to know what this is. What is that, sir? It's me. It's a gummy bear. It's a gummy Joel. The <laughs> gummy Joel. I would, I would, I would say this is probably the first bio-printed human uh, shape, right? The first, the first actual, because this was from a scan, and so uh, I, my body was, my body was scanned, and then you printed it out bio. Like the, this is probably the first one. World's first. World's first. I like the sound of that. I request the highest of fives. This is amazing technology, and I'm and I'm blown away that I have a 3D printed little mini Joel with a mini hand and a mini high five. And it's exciting to think about the implications of this technology because unlike before, we're going to be able to print things that will go and save lives. That's fascinating, that blows my mind, and it's exciting to see the future. It's exciting to hold the future in my hand. Eric, thank you so much for this. I appreciate the tour. Little Joel can't give too big of a high five, but I sure can. <laughs> Thanks for watching all the way. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, because I love you all, as always. High five. Raise your hand. <laughs>